So coming to the anti-rheumatoid arthritis drugs, have you seen such conditions? Fingers and legs having this flexures. Have you seen these conditions? Okay. So this is rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. So what has happened here in rheumatoid arthritis? There is botanical deformity, ulnar deviation. Okay. Here the ulnar bone is there. So we call it as ulnar deviation of the metacarpalo phalangeal joints. Okay. Swan neck deformity. That is the finger appears like swan neck. Okay. What has happened here? Here you can see there is capsula. This is a normal joint. This is a abnormal joint. Okay, there is increase in the sinusoid fluid there. The joint cartilage you can see it is fully covering here. It is damaged and very small. Okay, that is what is happening in rheumatoid arthritis. Why this is happening? This is happening as a result of autoantibodies which are created against the strep uh, streptococcal infection. Okay, this streptococcus, streptococcus. These are commonly uh, causing. Uh, respiratory disorders like common cold and all. After that phase, what can happen? They can enter the blood and they can form the antibodies. Okay, there they can cause reaction. Commonly, first it appears as an infective disorder. Later, it becomes autoimmune. Okay, so it was in brief to for your understanding. So, what are the drugs we can use here? Okay, this is basically an auto-inflammatory reaction. That is our own immunity acting against our own system okay so we need to use the drugs which can suppress this autoimmune response so the basic drugs will be like immunosuppressants what are the immunosuppressants we are using here these are leflunomide methotrexate methotrexate is a common drug anti cancer drug we can use it here also cyclosporine and azathioprine so we have here the newer group of drugs which we call them as disease modifying anti rheumatoid arthritis drug okay dmrd stands for disease modifying anti rheumatoid arthritis drugs okay these are avitacept chloroquine hydroxychloroquine mycophenolate mofetel rituximab sulfasalazine and tocilizumab okay so have you heard of any of these drugs chloroquine have you heard Chloroquine is a anti-malarial drug. Very good. Okay, it is a anti-malarial drug. Hydroxychloroquine again it belongs to that group. Mycophenolate mofetil again it is a anti-cancer drug. Okay, rituximab. MAB stands for monoclonal antibodies. Okay, this is a chimeric, chimeric monoclonal antibody. Okay, glucocorticoids again these are uh, universal immunosuppressants. Glucocorticoids. Are the drugs which can be used for any type of inflammation? Okay, TNF alpha blocking agents. Okay, TNF alpha is the uh, acute phase uh, reactant chemokine. Okay, which can be released at the joints and it can produce joint destruction. So this acute joint destruction uh, chemokine that should also be prevented. And the drugs used for this are infliximab, etanercept, sertolizumab, okay, golimumab, and that is repeated. So, what is this TNF alpha? Here you can see TNF alpha is there. Okay, what it is doing here? It activates the release of nitric oxide, which can cause vasodilatation and adhesion. Okay, and increase the local blood vessel occlusion. Okay, so it can cause bone erosion. Osteoclastic activity can be increased. All of these things are brought about this by this TNF alpha. So coming to the first drug that is etanercept. Okay, it is a basically acting against TNF alpha. It is a genetically engineered fusion protein. Okay, it serves as extremely administered soluble TNF alpha receptor, which prevents the TNF alpha from binding to the membrane bone TNF alpha receptor. Okay, it, the negative point here is it does not discriminate between the TNF alpha and TNF beta. What this TNF beta is having in the body in a normal function is it is helpful for the body TNF beta. Okay, so this is the uh, TNF beta which can cause immune cellular immune response to infections. So somewhere infection is there, body has its own defense mechanism. Okay, that mechanism is again triggered by our TNF beta. 
but in this autoimmune condition what is happening the tnf alpha is there okay there is they are like good brother one brother is bad one brother is good okay tnf alpha is bad brother tnf beta is good brother okay two brothers with different mechanism of actions so we need to prevent this tnf alpha only but we have a drug here which can inhibit both so the normal infection uh, defense mechanism can also be prevented or it is also disturbed here okay anyway we need to use such drugs sometimes so administration is subcutaneous route 25 mg twice per week okay tfas about 1 12 hours that means about uh, one week we can be forgetting the drug okay that means once in weekly or once in five days where we can use this drug rheumatoid arthritis juvenile arthritis psoriatic arthritis okay and uh, treating sarcoidosis vaginal cancer so many uses are there basically in all these conditions the mechanism here is to decrease the inflammatory response induced by our tnf alpha okay so it is a step plus methotrexate they are now in trials so what adverse effects we can get okay so anti tnsf antibodies can also appear okay drug induced lupus activation of the latent tb okay yeah, drug induced lupus is means it is a skin tuberculosis just remember it's a skin tuberculosis okay and uh, latent tuberculosis means the person is uh, has taken some treatment for tuberculosis lung disease or maybe other parts of the body but when we use this drug which is a immunosuppressant okay some amount of immunity is preventing that latent tuberculosis from acting upon but when we use this drug immunity is suppressed and the diseases which were not seen uh, can flare up so coming to the next drug that is infliximab okay infliximab just i need to brief you about monoclonal antibodies okay the body can produce antibodies for any antigen okay uh, streptococcus can you name some bacteria okay shigella salmonella streptococcus there are so many bacteria so they can they are the antigens which are entering the body so body can produce <coughs> antibodies against this bacterial particles but these antibody particles may not be sufficient enough okay so what we can do we can artificially produce this antibodies by taking the antigens that is what we produce by genetically engineered monoclonal antibodies those drugs which end with map are the monoclonal antibodies just remember mab stands for monoclonal antibodies we will be learning it later in the later classes have you learned about this monoclonal antibodies you, you have been sensitized about this topic yes okay so i presume that okay it's a chimeric chimeric means both it contains rat particles and also human particles a chimeric is a one where the animal part and the human part is also there okay so it's crosses with the solvent as well as the membrane bond tna papar receptor and inhibits the activated t cells and macrophage function where we can use it crohn's disease chronic arthritis psoriatic arthritis have you heard of psoriasis yes psoriasis you, you have seen the condition yes lot of skin pe peeling will be there patient will be so absurd to look have you seen such conditions okay there is increased proliferation of the skin cells so in that condition what can happen if this skin psoriasis is there for longer time it can go for arthritis joints also okay where the patient will be having inflammation of the joints in that conditions also we can use this infliximab map so long term use again something like uh, the previous drug what we saw anti infliximab antibodies can also be there in the body come to the next drug again move map okay it is a fully humanized okay human okay xi stands for both animal part and uh, human part then you stands for humanized recombinant human anti tnf monoclonal antibody that means completely humanized means it can uh, it has less tendency to cause allergic reaction when animal part is there like xenap okay there is more tendency for allergic reactions <coughs> so let's immunogenic the infliximab 
So given subcutaneously, okay, plasma TRP is about 9 to 13 days. Again, long TRP is there. Okay, it can also be combined with without exit. Coming to the left lunar mind. What this left lunar mind is doing is it is a anti-metabolite here. Okay, by acting on this DHOD enzyme, okay, dihydrooretanol dehydrogenase enzyme, it decreases the uric UMP levels. Okay, once this decrease in the UMP levels are there, what will happen? The abnormal cells which are causing this reaction in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, that action can be prevented. How does it arrest it? Here you can see, once this dihydrooretanol is prevented, okay, oretanol formation is not there. And once oretanol formation is not there, what will happen? UMP levels will decrease. Okay, once UMP levels are decreased arrest the growth of the stimulated cells in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. There, there is a cell cycle, cell cycle, okay, mitotic phase, meiotic phase, that cell cycle is prevented. The cells which are having this toxic or the abnormal uh, physiology to go into causing rheumatoid arthritis joints, that cells are prevented from action. Okay, so it is basically forming, pre preventing the formation of UMP levels. So what will happen? Uh, the, in, uh, the enzyme on uh, this is dihydrooretanol synthesis dehydrogenase. Okay, that enzyme level can be increased, and TRP is 19 days. Again, it is good. Okay, lecithinamide the it can act for longer duration, and it can undergo enterohepatic circulation. That means the drug which has reached the intestine can again transfer back to the hepatic system and recirculated. Okay, so that is what we meant by intrahepatic circulation. Basically, you should remember the drugs which undergo intrahepatic circulation, their plasma TR increases and they can stay in the body for longer time. Drug adverse effects, diarrhea, headache, rashes, hepatic, increase in the levels of hepatic transaminases will be there. So, leflinomide, again, we are not using them in pregnancy and lactation because pregnancy, the babies, uh, normal cell growth will be affected because decreasing the uh, uridine monophosphate levels or U UMP levels what it can do these are the basic uh, building blocks of a life okay so that can also be prevented okay so they need to be contraindicated in pregnancy and lactation drug interaction cholesterol increases its excretion so cholesterol is a drug where we, which are used for biliary diseases so biliary stones will be there Okay, in those conditions we are using these drugs. So if we use them along with this, there is excretion of more and more excretion of leflunomide will be there, the drug may not be acting. So coming to the classical drug, classical anti-cancer drug, okay, it is a folic acid synthesis inhibitor, okay, and it is used for most most of the anti-cancer conditions. So it is a folic acid antagonist with cytotoxic and immunosuppressant activity. It has rapid onset of action, acts on much lower doses than needed for cancer chemotherapy. So cancer chemotherapy, we need higher dose of it, but in for this uh, rheumatoid arthritis and in case of psoriatic arthritis, we just use like a 7 mg or 15 mg once in a week dosage. Very less dosage can act as a anti-inflammatory that is again less toxic for the patients. The mechanism of action here is by blocking the enzyme, ICAR, okay, amino imidazole, carboxamide, double cleavage. Just remember, it is the antifolic acid the antagonist. You need not remember this. Okay. So it inhibits the replication function of the T cells and there is cyclic inhibition of the DNA synthesis. So where we can use psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic arthritis, granulometer, regenerative granulometosis, so, okay. so many conditions you can use this immunosuppressant drug. So other effects here are mucosal ulcers, better toxicity, okay, and pseudo lymphomatous reactions. So in case of toxicity, what is happening? Toxicity means the folic acid levels will be decreased in the body. Once these folic acid levels are excessively decreased, what can happen? The normal cell growth, what it needs? It needs folic acids for its development. Okay, so normal cell growth can also be inhibited. So in that conditions, we can give the uh, saving factor or lipoviral factor. Okay, 
which can increase the folic acid levels in the body. So coming to the next drug that is cyclosporine. Okay, cyclosporine again, it's a <coughs> interleukin inhibitor or the chemokine inhibitor. Okay, interleukin 1 and 2 <coughs> receptor production is inhibited and it inhibits the macrophage T cell interaction. Okay, whereby it can inhibit the cells which can go into the joints and cause inflammation. So adverse effects here are nephrotoxicity and it can be accentuated with NSID. So if we use cyclosporine plus NSID, the toxic effect can be increased. So azathioprine, this drug is given in your uh, nursing textbook from Padma Jodhya Kumar. Okay, what she is, uh, it is a, again, prominent anti-cancer drug, just remember it is a pro-drug for 6 mercaptopurin. Again, 6 mercaptopurin is a pro, uh, anti-metabolite. Okay? It gets converted itself into 6 thio GDP, provides counterfeit product which gets false incorporation into the DNA. Okay. So GDP stands for guanosine triphosphate. Okay. So normally they are the building blocks of this DNA and once it gets falsely incorporated, there is no chain elongation. So there is a normal DNA formation, it's a chain which is forming there with the help of GDP, ADP, all these things. If this false incorporation of 6 mark capital purine is taking place, what will happen? The chain elongation will stop. Okay. So once chain elongation is stopped, it makes, makes a non-functional part, okay, prevention of the T cell activation, proliferation, all the further steps are prevented. Where we can use it? We can also use this drug for organ transplant rejection, rheumatoid arthritis, IBD. IBD stands for inflammatory bowel disease. Okay, so side effects are bone marrow suppression, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia and alopecia. What is alopecia? Hair, decrease in the hair formation or no formation. Again, mycophenolate morphotil, it is a prominent anti-cancer drug. Okay, it is a, it is obtained from fungal, Origin, okay, it's a semi-synthetic fungal antibiotic, okay, mycophenolic acid, it inhibits the proliferation of the both T and B cells and reduces the production of the cytotoxic effect and thereby de novo purine synthesis is prevented. So mycophenolic purine, again, it can prevent the leukocyte adhesion, okay, and inhibit the inhibition of T cell in T cell. Okay. What, this, what is happening at the joints is, that there is more and more accumulation in the cells. So primary function is to prevent the inflammatory reaction and also cell proliferation. First cell production is decreased, then cell proliferation. Both these steps should be prevented and most of these anti-cancer drugs, azathioprine, mycophenolic, morphogenol, all these are effective in these steps. And they can be used orally, okay. It can undergo intrapatic circulation, that means it can stay in the plasma for longer time and again eliminated by kidneys. Adverse effects, GI metabolic effects are there. Hematopoietic adverse effects such as decrease in the granulocytes, okay, that can also be there. Hematotoxicity is also seen as the dermocose intrahepatic circulation. Glucocorticoids, again, as in gout, they can also be used for this reaction, okay, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, for symptomatic relief, we can use this drug immediately relief from the inflammation and can give some time for other DMARDs for acting. So intra-articular injections of triamcinolone and hydrocarticles are advised when the condition is very severe. Otherwise, if it is used again and again, there can also be adverse effects like joint destruction. So they are inhibiting the clonal proliferation of these T cells. So can gold be used as a treatment? Yes. Gold can also be used in the treatment. Okay, there are some gold products. Those are aromine and sodium aromalate. So gold in very small quantities they are used in uh, chaman prash. Have you heard of this chaman dabar chaman prash? All these things. So they 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 are the ancient products. They were using it, but they may be knowing or may not be knowing. We don't know. But recent studies, what we also got is if you use this gold product, they can decrease the inflammatory products, inflammatory products, okay, and how these are mediated is, the cell mediated immune represent, uh, response is suppressed, reduction in the circulating rheumatoid arthritis factors prevents the joint destructions, okay.
the the orothermalate and orothermalate these are the gold derivatives and what it can do it can also go for adverse effects such as exfoliative dermatitis hepatitis all these things can also be there chloroquine hydroxychloroquine is a antimalarial drug just remember it traps the free radicals and produces the side effects it prevents the formation of the joint destruction surface salicin again it is here suppressing the rheumatoid arthritis factors okay rheumatoid arthritis factor level should be decreased and free radicals are prevented free radical formation is prevented 